There are some really delicious prepackaged foods out there, but there are also some really scary prepackaged foods out there. Whenever you are buying an item, there are two things that you should look at. One is the nutritional facts panel, and two is the ingredients list. For tip number one, you have to look at the ingredients list and ask yourself, is there anything on here that I can't pronounce? And if the answer to that is yes, either you should put the item back because similarly to how you shouldn't take a pill from your medicine cabinet without knowing what it is, you also shouldn't put something into your body without knowing what it is. So unless you have the time to invest to go and find out what this item is and read the scientific literature on what it might do to your body, then it's probably just best to avoid prepackaged foods containing that item. Now let's get on to tip number two. Do you see any dyes on the list? For example, yellow five or red 40, those are the ones that I most commonly see on ingredients lists, but there are so many more out there. And unfortunately, these can have detrimental consequences. And even though they are FDA approved to go into our food and they are generally considered to be safe, there have also been several studies showing that they might have adverse effects. So why take a risk? And also on that note, why buy something that needs to be colored? If your food needs to be colored, and if the manufacturer doesn't want you to see the natural color of the food, and if they don't think you will eat it in its natural color, then maybe you should avoid that food. All right, item number three to look out for is high fructose corn syrup. This is a big one because high fructose corn syrup is almost everywhere you look. High fructose corn syrup is a highly refined sweetener and it is found both in sweet items and items that shouldn't have to be sweetened, which to me doesn't make much sense. But over time, eating too many products with high fructose corn syrup can lead to insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, weight gain, and fatty liver disease. I know you don't go to the grocery store looking for any of these ailments, so why increase your likeliness of having to deal with one of these ailments later in your life? So once again, if you see high fructose corn syrup on the ingredients list, just put the item back on the shelf and look for something else. Item number four to look out for is polysorbate 80. Polysorbate 80 is an emulsifier and it keeps your food from falling apart and it has been deemed to be generally safe in food, pharmaceuticals, and cosmetics. It's most commonly found in creamy things and in ice cream and it can also be found in frozen foods. As a fun fact, polysorbate 80 when used in ice cream makes your ice cream more resistant to melting. So that sounds good, right? But is it worth it? In 2020, a study involving mice that were pre-treated with polysorbate 80 for eight weeks actually demonstrated a disruption in their gut bacteria. And I could talk forever about gut bacteria and why you shouldn't disrupt it, especially considering that your digestive system is sometimes known as the little brain because it can have such an impact on the rest of your life. But that's not what this video is about. So I know at this point you might be thinking mice are mice and humans are humans and mice don't live as long and we can't necessarily say that bad side effects in one mean bad side effects in the other. But personally, I would rather not take that chance. So if small intestine inflammation and the disruption of your gut bacteria are not areas where you want to take a risk, then it might be a good idea to just put the food item back. And if you're worried about leaving behind your favorite ice cream because it might have polysorbate 80, then rest assured that there are many ice creams out there that do not actually have polysorbate 80. You just have to read the ingredients list. The next item I would avoid, item number five, is propylene glycol. Propylene glycol is also another one that is out there, and sometimes this one is hidden on the ingredients list because it can add a little bit of a sweet flavor, so it can be hidden in the category of natural flavors or artificial flavors. Propylene glycol can be found in so many items, especially dairy products, bread, cake mix, salad dressing, dried soups, drink mixes, and soft drinks. So if it's everywhere, you might be wondering, it can't be that bad, right? It's been approved by the FDA to be in so many things. And yes, within limits, propylene glycol won't kill you. And even if you have all of the ingredients on the list and they all contain propylene glycol, once again, it probably won't kill you. But something that would make me think twice about consuming propylene glycol, especially if it is strictly listed on the ingredients list, and if it's not even hidden, is that in 2018, the American Contact Dermatitis Society actually named propylene glycol their allergen of the year. If you know that you're a person who has very strong allergies because your immune system tends to overreact, then it is a good idea to know if you have any kind of sensitivity to propylene glycol and be on the lookout for it on ingredients lists. Now we're on to product number six to look out for in an ingredients list. 
And this item comes from red seaweed, which makes it all natural, right? And it is the third emulsifier item on our list. This product called carrageenan, I hope I'm pronouncing that one correctly, but the fact that I can't pronounce it means I shouldn't be eating it. Carrageenan is bad news because it is highly inflammatory to a human body and no one needs more inflammation in their life. Carrageenan is commonly found in items such as chocolate milk, cottage cheese, cream, ice cream, dairy alternatives such as plant-based milk, plant-based cheese, plant-based creamers, and deli meats. So as you can see, this is another ingredient that is found in so many places. And again, eating carrageenan occasionally won't kill you, but why contribute to inflammation in your body if you don't have to? So if you see this item on the ingredients list, then I would highly recommend putting that item back. And once again, if you are worried about your ice cream, then rest assured that there are plenty of higher end ice cream brands out there that don't use carrageenan in their ingredients list. Carrageenan was a very hard one for me because I actually found this one in one of my longtime favorite microwavable foods, which was the Marie Callender's chicken pot pies. And I was so sad when I found out about this. And even though at the time I thought that they were convenient and delicious, I don't think it's worth risking the health of my future self for a couple of minutes of enjoyment. So I'm really grateful that I've started looking at ingredients lists even in some of my favorite household staples. The next item that I think you should be on the lookout for is sodium. When you are looking at the sodium content of a product, the easiest thing to do is look at the percent of daily value listed on that product. And ideally, you don't want this number to go over 100 if you were to add up everything that you ate that day. You can use calorie counting apps like MyFitnessPal to track your sodium levels. And if you want to better know your sodium intake, it's ideal to do this for a week. We need sodium in order to survive as humans, but too much sodium can really be a problem. Whenever you have too much sodium, your body will retain water. And when you retain water, not only do you get bloated, but other things start to happen. Think of the example of a water balloon. As you put water into a water balloon and the water balloon keeps filling up, the more water you put into it, the harder the water is pushing against the sides of the balloon. The same thing happens to your body. When your water mixes with your blood, you get an increased blood volume. And instead of pushing against the sides of a balloon, your body is actually pushing against your veins and your arteries and the walls of your heart chambers. Then you get increased tension and after a certain threshold, this is called hypertension. Hypertension is another word for high blood pressure. And when you have sustained high blood pressure for a long period of time, this can be detrimental to your heart and lead to all sorts of heart complications and heart disease. So please do your future self a favor and be aware of your sodium intake. The next item that I want you to be on the lookout for is trans fats. As of 2018, trans fats have not been allowed in food. If there is less than half a gram of trans fats in a product, then it can be labeled as having zero grams of trans fats. So zero grams of trans fats is pretty misleading on packages. So now we have to go back to the ingredients list. If you see anywhere on there that it says partially hydrogenated oils, then that means that this product actually does have trans fats, even if it claims to have zero grams of trans fats. This is me from the future, and I just wanted to clarify something on the video. There is a difference between partially hydrogenated oils and fully hydrogenated oils. When you see partially hydrogenated oils on an ingredients list, there are trans fats involved. But when a fat molecule goes through the full hydrogenation process, when every single carbon that needs to be hydrogenated gets hydrogenated in order to make it more saturated, then that process doesn't lead to trans fats. Normally, unsaturated fats would be liquid at room temperature, but they can go through a chemical process where you add in hydrogen molecules and then that item will become solid at room temperature. A good example of this is peanut butter. If you opt for all natural peanut butter, usually you will have to stir it and it will have a layer of liquid oil on the top. But other types of more processed peanut butter, you don't have to stir it. And the reason for that is because they have gone through the hydrogenation process so they can be solid at room temperature. The reason trans fats are bad is not only because they are foreign to the body, but it's also because they increase your bad cholesterol and decrease your good cholesterol. So that's a bad situation and they increase your risk of heart disease. So please keep the trans fats out of your life. The next one we're going to talk about is MSG. MSG is naturally occurring in so many things. It's naturally occurring in cheese and tomatoes and soy sauce. And I have no problem with it when it's found in its natural places and it's doing what it's supposed to do. 
MSG is used to add flavor to food and it can give more of an umami meaty taste to meals that would otherwise be flavorless. And because at this time MSG is a controversial topic and some people have reported to be more sensitive to MSG than other people, I think that you should make that personal choice of what your feelings are towards MSG. Personally, I like to keep MSG in the places where it naturally belongs and then if I see it as an added ingredient or if I see it listed as yeast extract, then depending on that item then I will make up my mind on whether or not I actually want to consume that item. MSG can also appear in the ingredients list as yeast extract and because there has been a lot of conflicting evidence on MSG and some people have self-reported that they are more sensitive to it than other people, then I think that is completely a personal choice on if you want to consume MSG or if you don't want to. I don't think there's enough information at this time to know whether it's safe or unsafe or how much is safe. So I leave that up to you but I think it's always a good idea to be aware of what you are eating. And finally, we're on to item number 10. No one knows you better than you know yourself and you have to ask yourself, am I allergic to anything or is there any ingredient that I have had sensitivity to in the past? And if you answered yes to either of those questions, then you really need to be diligent and look at the ingredients list of everything that you buy. Just because a certain ingredient is not pictured on the front cover of a microwavable food item doesn't mean it's not in there and just because it's not on the title either it doesn't mean that it's not excluded. I've noticed this is the case a lot with cheese. I don't like cheese and I have a mild dairy allergy, so I generally try to avoid things with cheese. But before I started being diligent about reading ingredients lists and reading labels, there had been many times where I bought something and I didn't realize it had cheese as the ingredient because cheese was not in the picture and it wasn't mentioned in the title. So ever since I started reading ingredients lists, I've had absolutely zero surprises on if there is actually cheese in my food. And one final note about this, if you are allergic to something, then you don't only need to look at the ingredients list, but look at the allergy warning. And it might be very important for you to know if that particular item was processed in a facility that also processes things such as nuts or dairy or wheat or any other allergen. 